All right, all right, all right. Thanks for tuning in to All Things Division Three Soccer with Simple Coach and Jackie. I guess you can gather that I'm Simple Coach and that there is Jackie. You might hear her snore. Really grateful you haven't tuned in today in particular um, for what my chief marketing officer is calling Simple Coach to Coach, which is a show that's designed to uh, be a place where I get a chance to speak with Division Three coaches about their philosophies of the game, their seasons, what have you, whatever floats my boat at the time. And if you caught the video from the first video that I did with head coach Ruben Burke of the 2021 men's national champions, Connecticut College, um, Next week, I will be speaking with the 2021 Women's National Champions head coach, um, Jamie Gunderson of Christopher Newport University. So I'm super, super psyched for that one. Um, but for this one, I went in a little different direction, not so specific to Division Three, but I thought it was just, it turned out to be such a great conversation that I was like, we gotta, we gotta capture this. So I I've, may have mentioned in the past, most of my career I've spent as a goalkeeper. And, and, and from that, I've really have developed some strong opinions about the position and from a, you know, how a goalkeeper should play and expectations and whatnot. And, you know, part of doing these videos and have this channel was for me to challenge some of those notions by talking to people, doing research, collecting data, doing all sorts of things that would go against maybe where my where where I thought the game was at or what I how I think the game should be played. And so for this one, I asked a, someone I know, uh, a remarkable goalkeeper coach, to to join me um, today. Uh, John Plogic is the founder of Modern Goalkeeper training systems in New Jersey. He is regarded as one of the best, if not the best goalkeeper coaches in the state of New Jersey. Um, there's a there's a few uh, notable ones. I could think the, 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 the legendary Paul Blodgett who sort of trailblazed this whole thing in goalkeeping, goalkeeper training here in the state. And so I, I've asked him to join and he crazily accepted. For today's video, it's a little bit different format, had some issues, so I just tried to splice together responses uh, uh, that I hope to resolve uh, in the next interview that I do because this one was so was so good and so long, we decided we were going to continue it next week or in two weeks. Um, so, because I didn't get through probably, you know, 75% of my questions, it was that, it was that good. So this one's a little bit different format. Hope you enjoy it. Hope you, hope you learned something. This is actually the first of three. So, um, this one, expect a second one probably in the next day or so. And then the third one will be the audio fixed, um, uh, um, continuation of of my discussion with coach john so with that i hope you enjoy it all right great so i grew up in carney new jersey um you know, wow yes yeah, <laughs> soccer town usa and um luckily i was I was born and raised there, but neither of my parents played soccer growing up. So um, just being raised and being part of the community, you just started playing uh, soccer as a kid. And I was fortunate enough to to have that, that background as a youth player. Um, and it was, uh, it was great as you kind of made it through your career. And then, you know, you grow up, you, you play for Carney Thistle, and you, I played for Central Jersey Riptide. Then Middletown uh, Celtic, and then luckily got selected for Red Bull New York, the under-19 team, and then then college, and 
and had an opportunity playing overseas in Norway, uh, and and then uh, decided to, to hang them up and get right into coaching at like 24, 25 years old. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's how we started. Uh, that's how I started modern goalkeeper in 2009. Mm-hmm. So for me, it, it was important to design a training environment where the kids had a place to develop. When I was a kid, you know, there was maybe one, one reputable, one or two reputable goalkeeper coaches in this part of the country, in the state. And there was just not that many goalkeeper coaches, period. So I say reputable because uh, there was one or two really well-known or good ones, but then there was no one else that was even coaching goalkeepers. So you're growing up. And uh, you just don't have a place to learn how to play the position. And I didn't learn how to really be a goalkeeper until I was 16, 15, 15 16. Yeah. I was just, you know, part of, uh, you know, part of, um, part of a, a club and you, you're just training with the field players and, and you're in goal within the training exercises. But I didn't have someone teaching me how to dive or how to catch the ball properly. It was just you know, instinct, survival, and kind of replicating <laughs> what you see on TV. Yeah. Um, so it was important for me uh, when I stopped playing to design uh, an environment where kids could train every day if they wanted to and have that sort of backing where we're going to be with them as a youth player all the way up until, you know, maybe all the way up until their collegiate career or professional career, or, or maybe they stop playing when they're 18 or 21 years old. Um, but we wanted to be there to teach them and uh, give them an opportunity to to learn how to be a goalkeeper in our training uh, in our training programs. I think so. It's it's interesting, right? So now it's now there's a lot more discussion, and even the broadcasters, when you're watching the games, will even talk about how the goalkeeper is integrated into the team. Different. So for me now, this is this is 2000 and 2009. So we're leading into the um, we're leading into the 2010 the World Cups yeah. that are coming up. The 2010, and then we have uh, the 2014. So um, for me, you're looking at the type of goalkeepers and the style in which they play. And I I know growing up, it was you're taught to guard the area, which is usually and the, and the area, area then was probably the where the, where the penalty, penalty spot, spot is. is. Yeah. If you had the penalty spot and you drew, let's say, let's say there was another box between the six and the eight, yeah. and, the and the penalty area, right? If, if you drew that, that area, area, that was kind of your responsibility. If the, if the ball goes in that area, we want you to come and pick it up or claim it or or, or intercept, intercept something in that area, like a dangerous situation. And and, and, you know, you look at it and you're like, dude, dude the field's <laughs> huge. Um, you, you look at how the game has changed. And I was in my early 20s at that time. And you're watching the pro teams train and, and play. And that's when Barcelona was. And there was Arsenal. And then Barcelona were really wiping the floor with everyone. And you watch the style in which they played. And the goalkeeper was an integral part of starting, you know, kickstarting the attack. And then an integral part of intercepting dangerous situations and just like nulling dangerous situations before it even looked dangerous mm-hmm. um, because they they just came off their line. They played very high um, and, I'm, and I wanted to start, I wanted to figure out a way to train goalkeepers a little bit different so they can stop things before they actually happen. Um, but, but then, then also have, have the ability to start things. Yeah. So, so if they have, have the ball and they see something opening, to, to be able to break through some lines and make some passes. And I, I don't want to say be a playmaker because you'll have field player coaches go, hey, man, you're, that's not for you, right? That's for other players on the team. But to link and begin to open up spaces where you can kickstart the attack and you have the skills and the ability to disrupt things maybe a long ball before it gets dangerous or a through ball um or a ball you you can just come out and clear with your head like so those things using your feet better using your head and your body to control the ball outside the area in which you can use your hands that's what's really important um 
as a modern goalkeeper. Yeah. So we we do we do some things different than your normal goalkeeper training environment. So the one thing I started to do was bringing multiple coaches into one training ground. That was a game changer for us. So the normal thing would be you go to training, there's one goalkeeper coach, and in the youth setting, you may have a 13-year-old, an 11-year-old, a 14-year-old, and a 15-year-old, and it's almost impossible to make a practice that would work for all of them. Um, so you needed to come come up with an idea of like, all right, well, if I have six players or eight players coming to training, I need to figure out, can I cut them into two or three groups so we can train them properly? Because everyone has different needs. Um, and that's even within a structured curriculum. Like, you know, you're working on positioning, handling and shot stopping. But still, like, if a younger kid is having trouble with a front's mother or even just catching the ball because they they just have bad habits of actually catching or maybe they weren't taught properly, it's going to disrupt how everyone else works in the session. So how do we make a, a training environment where everyone can improve and it's competitive um, and you're doing the right thing by the players? And the, the easiest thing to do was, okay, let's add more coaches than just one coach. Um, and let's, we're going to use a similar curriculum, but if I have me and two or three of my colleagues here that, that know what they're doing and they understand how we work in our system, we're able to touch and help the players um, be able to work on the things that they need and be able to uh, accommodate them better. Yeah, I, I think there's common trends you see, like, you know, there's 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 common trends you see with goalkeeper training, right? So there's some coaches that are very specific on where you keep your hands when you're set. And then there's um, other coaches that are very strict on the type of footwork you use, right? And the type of footwork you use when. And then there's, a, of course, we train a bunch of different ways we train footwork a bunch of different ways, just goalkeeping in general. So there's different movements you use in training that you use in training to help develop how you're going to move in the game. You're not necessarily going to use that footwork in the game, like a, a side shuffle. You never use it in the game. It's very rare you use it in a game, but you use that in training to help develop speed and power over short distances, right? So, um, these are the things you see when players come into training and they're new or they haven't been here before. We have a different way of how we train our athletes. So some of them come in and they look, look at us and they go, well, Hey, I'm not used to doing this or I'm not used to doing this way, or I was taught this, or I was told that. And we always say, Hey, come in with an open mind. We're going to explain to you why we're teaching you this or why we're, we're showing you how to do this. And, a lot of the things we see that they have trouble with when they first come in is how they get set or how they stand before the ball is hit. Some goalkeepers' feet are always moving, right? Then there's others that come in and they're they're still, but they're very narrow, right? Their posture is very narrow. Others, their hands are very uh, neutral or, or very very into their body. So if you if you picture yourself standing and you naturally your arms go outside your waist near your pockets of your pants, that would be kind of a normal posture for a goalkeeper. So your hands go outside your, your legs, outside your pants, between your knee and your hip. I say gunslinger mode, right? So they used to do like back in the Wild West, boom, like they do the gunslinger because it was quick, right? And it, it was a, a way you can move a bunch of different ways. Um, some players come in and their hands are very close to their body, almost in like a clasping sort of, you know, mm -hmm. or very close. And that's going to impact how your body can naturally move, um, let alone just catch the ball, you know, um, because if you look at when we move and when we run, our arms are always used to balance our body as our legs are moving. So our, our legs are moving and our arms are swinging or our arms are, are running in a, or moving in an X pattern to keep the body balanced. So it's important we have 
you know, the, the hands in such a place where it keeps balance in our body and then we could we can move um, and for a goalkeeper and catch the ball. So you see those little nuances, like they come in, they were taught a certain specific way to catch, which works in that specific situation. Like the coach is hitting volleys at you. Okay, if I stand like this and I already have my hands up here, it's gonna be very easy to catch a volley that's coming right to my nose because I know it's going there. But then you flip side to the game, you're never standing like that in the game and the ball is always on the majority of the time on the ground in the game and it's always moving so you need to be fluid you need to be able to move and react to different situations um so the biggest things we notice when they come in and they're new is how they move their footwork and movement patterns and then how they catch or how they try to secure the ball whether it's diving uh normal catching or uh just ways they secure the ball Yeah, I think so. All of those guys, you, you know, you have you have Bobby, you have Dylan, you have you have Matt. Uh, we have Evan Lauro as well. Um, uh, you know, we have Hartman. You have those guys. The first thing you you think of is their attitude and their willingness to work, right? So they have an attitude where they want to work hard, they want to get better, they want to climb the mountain because it's such a hard position. So they're mentally strong. They have that work ethic. Um, you know, uh, out of all of those guys, they have different physical attributes. So the biggest is Bobby. He's like 6'6". Six, six. And then the smallest is Hartman, who's six foot flat. Um, and they have different physical attributes. You know, Bobby's long, uh, long and lean and uh, long range and can do things and reach things other people can't. And then you have like a guy like Hartman, who is small, really dynamic, really quick, moves really well. But the intangible things that they have is their work ethic, their willingness to learn, their ability to read the game and understand the game. Um, and that's that's always the biggest thing is being a goalkeeper is not about just stopping shots. It's about solving problems before they happen reading the game and seeing things maybe three or four steps before your team notices it and if you're sitting back there in the crow's nest and you're very bright and you understand the game and you know how you want to stop the other team from getting scoring opportunities you're able to position your troops better and organize your team and you're just going to be more successful and then you bring in all the hard work you do in training the physical stuff and being ready to handle the technical things that happen and uh, the tactical situations in the game. And then you're just a better goalkeeper than anyone else because you can put your team in a position to help before it happens. Then you already know what's going to happen because you know the ball's over there. They can only cross or shoot from a bad angle. So it's like taking a multiple choice test. You have A, B, C, and D, but B and D are gone already. It's only going to be A or C. And that's the difference. The high-level players can limit or, or narrow down the things the opposing team can do. And then within those things, when it happens, they know what to do. And and they're able to do it at speed in, a, in like a game speed moment. Um, so the work ethic, the mindset, the soccer IQ. Um, the being a student of the game and then just old fashioned get into work every day. Yeah. So right now, I think right now, my favorites, uh, Neuer is always, he's always our guy. That's where, where I came up with the idea of modern goalkeeper, um, was watching Neuer and Neuer's, I think he's a year younger than me. I'm, I'm born in 1985. I think he's an 86 um, or an 84, something like that. But So you're growing up watching European soccer and soccer on TV, and the Champions League was on ESPN at the time, and you're watching different goalkeepers play. And My first Champions League game I watched was Real Madrid versus Bayer Leverkusen in the Champions League final, and Casillas gets subbed in in the last like 10 minutes of the game. And he's thrown into the fire. He's a young kid. He looks like he's 
I think he was like 19 years old yeah. or something at the time. And you look at him and you go, dude, this guy looks small on TV. And, um, you know, he's like six foot tall. And, yeah. and you look at how he plays and, uh, you know, you, you look at him and you're like, okay, he's totally different than the generation of goalkeepers before. Like the guy they subbed off that got hurt and they put Casillas in, it's polar opposites. Mm -hmm. um, and then you look at other goalkeepers, you know, like Oliver Kahn, really like watching Khan growing up, Jens Lehmann. Um, Schmeichel was a little bit before I started watching, quite honestly. Um, and then the other, the generation, uh, the, the now generation, which you have Oblak, you have Neuer, um, you have Ederson, you have Allison, you have De Gea. Um, then you have a couple years back, you have Victor Valdez, who was excellent for Barcelona, didn't get enough credit because Casillas was a starter for Spain. You had Pepe Reina for Liverpool and for Spain. Um, you had Andreas Palop for Sevilla when Sevilla won a bunch of mm -hmm. uh, UEFA Cups. And you look at how these guys played. Um, and they, you know, Gregory Coupe, for, uh, French goalkeeper, played for Lyon. You look at a lot of these guys and how they played, and they were really dynamic. Um, and uh, they played different than the last generation with a more emphasis on using your feet, but the most emphasis on intercepting dangerous situations before they happen. Mm. You'd see them like come out of the, yeah. come out of the penalty area or they would just get into positions where they would stifle what the other team was doing. Yeah. And it was uh, ushering in a new era of how the goalkeeper needed to play. Yeah. Um, and I think now uh, you have, you have a lot of coaches that want to play the new style and the, the breaking out of the back and using the goalkeeper and playing that style, but they're not allowing the goalkeeper to play. You need to let them play. You need to let, let them make mistakes and make errors and be a part of the team and give up goals and learn how to make those decisions that happen within a fraction of a second. Like, yeah, I know I'm going and I can get it. And there's a, a reason some of the kids don't do so well in the youth years is they try and then the coach hits them with some criticism and continues the criticism and, and forces the goalkeeper to lose their, the fire in the decision making, right? Yeah. Like, Hey, I, I know I can go in and get it and intercept it. It may not be so clean this time, but, the next 10 times I do it, it'll be cleaner. Um, so that's the hardest, the hardest thing is having a coach that just lets you play and trust mm -hmm. what you're doing. Like they selected you as a starter for a reason and now let the kid go and play and let them just do their thing. Cause every goalkeeper is different Yeah. and every goalkeeper is going to win a game for you differently. Yeah. You know, that's the biggest thing. Like you can have, someone with with Tommy in goal, you're going to win the game 5-2. to two. And when, when Josh is in goal, you're going to win the game one nothing. It's just because of how the puzzle pieces work. But then you look it over a 10 or 15 game span and you go, well, I, I want Tommy in goal because over this amount of games, I know what he's going to bring to the table. And it fits with the style our team plays and yeah. the how good how our field players play it jives and now the the unit works well together so in my opinion it's all of us as youth coaches need to let the kids play and let them make mistakes and that are going to lead to them being a better player um and just there's no need for for subbing goalkeepers at halftime or or rotating goalkeepers in a, a funny way that's not going to lead to letting them play and develop and learn the game. I think the honest answer is, is yes. Right. So you have some of your, your players that they go to uh, different, you know, different colleges and different institutions. And some of them are lucky enough to have a goalkeeper coach and others are not. And, um, you just see a, di a different level of sharpness and uh, how sharp they are technically and 
And I think goalkeeper coach, having a goalkeeper coach is that, that belief and that confidence. It, and it, just knowing someone is there, you're getting some form of reps and you're getting some form of feedback and you're getting some support that understands how you feel and what your day to day is like and can talk to you about things in the game and situations in the game. Um, and you see a difference in those athletes that have someone at the university. And usually those schools, they're the schools that are more successful because a, a lot of the collegiate games, especially the D3 level, is is decided. They're close games, right? They're decided on, on um, uh, mistakes, you know, usually... Uh, you know, usually uh, set pieces or something. Um, like a lot of college games or set pieces, it's it's a different style um, than the high the higher level D one games now. Mm -hmm. It's a lot different now than it was ten years ago. So um, having a a goalkeeper that has a goalkeeper coach in your university or your team has a goalkeeper coach. Um, you definitely see the difference when the kids come home from break, mm -hmm. you know, after the fall season and then they come back, uh, you, you see some of them come back and you're like, well, you can see the improvement mm -hmm. because they've played 20 games or they've played, you know, or they've been in the college environment for the mm -hmm. first time. So the level and the speed is, is quicker and they've gotten better. And then you see the ones that had that experience and had a goalkeeper coach during that time and they're even uh even better and and the confidence level is higher mm -hmm. so they have more belief and they've 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 just gotten more reps and more work in while they were while they were at school mm -hmm. so unfortunately there is a difference you'll see the goalkeepers come back and the ones with the goalkeeper coaches are uh, in a better place than the mm -hmm. ones that do not mm -hmm. so was that fantastic or what like i mentioned there's going to be more of this to come in a second episode uh, with Coach John Plogic of Modern Goalkeeper Training Systems. Until then, thanks for supporting the channel. Uh, I'd be remiss. My CMO would be really ticked off if I didn't mention the subscribe, like, bell thing. And yeah, I will see you next time. Like I said, and hopefully in the next day or two, you'll see this the second half of this of this interview. Thanks. Bye.